Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and I'm here to tell you about a long overdue replacement for the aging JPEG image format. It's called the High Efficiency Image Format, HIF or HIF for short, which may not sound particularly catchy, but thanks to much more modern compression, it can actually exceed the quality of JPEG images in less space. This means you can squeeze more pictures into your memory cards while potentially exceeding the quality. What's not to like? If you're getting a sense of deja vu though, it's because HIF is already employed by some of the most popular cameras on the planet. It's been available on the iPhone since iOS 11 was introduced back in 2017, albeit with a slightly different name, but amazingly, none of the dedicated camera companies have shared Apple's enthusiasm for it. Until early 2020, that is, when Canon decided to join the party and offer HIF on its flagship EOS 1DX Mark III DSLR. I had an early chance to try out the 1DX Mark III and was particularly interested to make a bunch of JPEG versus HIF comparisons and also see how Canon's actually implemented the format, as I'm guessing it's going to become available on most or even all of their future cameras. I'm going to jump right into Canon's approach as there's already loads of backgrounders on HIF history and tech. On the 1DX Mark III you have to choose whether the camera records JPEG or HIF, you can't record both at the same time, although whatever you do choose can also be recorded with an additional RAW file if desired. Rather than offer a simple menu where you could just tick JPEG or HIF though, Canon forces you to the slightly confusingly titled HDRPQ menu instead. Now this is where you can enable HIF instead of JPEG as your compressed format of choice, as well as whether to prioritise mid or highlight tones in the processing. Once enabled, it effectively replaces JPEG in your other menus as your compressed format, but you can switch back and forth whenever you like. On the 1DX Mark III, Canon is using the .hif or HIF file extension for this format, and it's also possible to convert them into JPEGs using the camera in playback, which in theory could generate an image with a broader or at least alternatively tone mapped dynamic range than a native JPEG created at the time of capture. This forms the basis of my next comparisons, although when converting them one at a time using the camera, I did yearn for a batch conversion option. Hopefully this is something Canon could implement with a firmware update. To compare JPEG and HIF, I took two photos of the same subject, moments apart, using each format. I then converted the HIF file into a new JPEG using the camera's playback menu for comparison here, as Final Cut, which is what I used to edit these videos, couldn't directly import the HIF files at the time I made this video. At this point, even some of the applications that could recognize HIF as an image format often displayed them with strange tone mapping. You can see Adobe Bridge here previewing the HIF originals with crushed highlights, while Photoshop wouldn't even open them unless I changed their file extension from .hif to .heif or .heic. Obviously, this is likely to get much better as more cameras support HIF and the format becomes more established, but right now, for this comparison, the most effective approach was to compare out-of-camera JPEGs against JPEGs generated from a HIF file using the camera's menus. Now, since the original HIF files on the 1DX Mark III have 10 bits of tonal range compared to 8 on a standard JPEG, it allows the camera to handle that broader range differently at the time of conversion possibly retaining greater highlight or shadow detail. Now, before showing you the results, Canon's asked me to say that these images were shot on pre-production Canon beta sample models, and that final image quality may vary. Okay, here's my first image, this time of a parked race car, and this is the original JPEG out of camera. And now here's the JPEG generated from the HIF file. As I alternate back and forth between them, you'll notice the converted HIF file has retained more highlight and midtones best seen on the reflective road surface and in the background scenery. Interestingly, I noticed the 1DX Mark III often metered a shutter speed that was one third of an EV slower when it was set to HIF. So in this instance, the HIF file was captured at 1600th of a second versus 2000th of a second for the JPEG. Now this was also the case for compositions which match more closely than this one. Sorry for my handheld approach here. My second image shows a landscape with wispy clouds. This is the original JPEG image, and now for the JPEG converted in camera from the HIF file. And again, the 1DX Mark III metered a slightly slower exposure of 320th of a second for the HIF versus 400th of a second for the JPEG here. As I alternate between them, you can see the converted HIF file has retrieved some highlight cloud detail that's mostly become blown out on the original JPEG. In my third example, I've gone for a portrait shot, which, using the camera's viewfinder metering, has underexposed the subject a little in my opinion. 
Again though, the HIF exposure remained one third of an EV slower than the JPEG. It's interesting that, isn't it? As I switch back and forth between the JPEG and the converted HIF file, the initial differences are more subtle than before. There's not any obvious difference in the clouds, although the road surface is a little less saturated on the HIF version. Interestingly, the biggest difference, to my eyes anyway, is actually the impact on the blurred transitions in the distance. Look closely at the mountain ridge and the edges of the trees on the right hand side and you'll see the HIF version actually shows a more sudden transition with the sky, almost like a stripe or a band across the image which doesn't look as good as the smoother transition on the JPEG version, again to me personally. This also goes against what I expected from the higher dynamic range of the HIF original, although remember we are comparing converted JPEGs here. In the fourth example, I have a sunrise for you. And again, the biggest difference between the original JPEG and the converted HIF file regards the gradation between the saturated solar disk and the sky around it. The converted HIF file blends to an orange color sooner than the JPEG does, but is this correct or more desirable? At this point, I'd also like to make another observation. HIF often promises the quality of a JPEG with roughly half the file size, but of course the actual file sizes depends on the level of compression employed by the camera. Now when using the default settings on the EOS 1DX Mark III, I found my original HIF files were indeed smaller than the original JPEGs, but only by about 10% in these examples. The degree of compression is very finely adjustable on the 1DX Mark III though, so there's plenty of opportunity to tweak. Oh, and in terms of exposure, the camera broke its habit so far and actually metered one third of an EV faster for the HIF version here. Now for my fifth and final example, this time of a dusky sky following sunset, and this time the 1DX Mark III metered the exact same exposure for both files. Now, as I alternate between them, the biggest difference is the brightness and the actual colour of the main sky area, which looks less intense as a result on the HIF version. Which versions of the five examples that I've shown to you are your favourites? Did HIF do a better job consistently, or did you prefer the out-of-camera JPEGs? Let me know in the comments. Technically speaking, HIF should be a no-brainer as the compressed format to replace the aging JPEG. They're smaller, have the potential to contain a broader dynamic range, and may also be able to accommodate some simple non-destructive edits like rotations. As I discovered in this brief test though, the real potential for HIF is greatly dependent on what software is working with them. At the time I made this video, I couldn't natively work with Canon's HIF files in my photo or video workflow, so I had to use the 1DX Mark III's built-in converter to generate JPEGs for comparison. As such, this first test is really more about comparing two different ways a camera and a pre-production one at that can generate a JPEG image, which obviously won't show the full benefits of HIF beyond tone mapping it differently to an 8-bit format. What surprised me the most, especially since Apple adopted HIF back in 2017, is just how little works with them right now. Canon's choice to use the .hif extension flummoxed most of my software. Mac OS wouldn't even show a thumbnail in Finder unless I changed the file extension to .hif or .hic, while frustratingly Photoshop only opened them in 8-bit, preventing any eternal benefits over a JPEG in post. Of course it's early days and hopefully greater support will come, but that's where we stand in early 2020. I also found an apparent lack of faith disturbing from the industry as a whole. When I filmed this video I reached out to most of the other camera companies to ask if they intended to support HIF and was met by an unsurprising but yet also slightly unenthusiastic no comment on future products. Now technically speaking HIF relies on the compression of the HEVC or H.265 video format and there's already a bunch of cameras which already support that. Certainly those which offer 4K at high frame rates like 50 or 60 p or in 10 bit at uh, uh, reasonable compression rates are already using H.265 and it might be possible for them to be updated to support HIF with a future firmware update, only time will tell. Certainly I don't expect any camera that doesn't already support H.265 video to offer HIF in the future though and in Canon's world that rules out pretty much every camera apart from the 1DX Mark III. H.265 and support for HIF is built into the latest Digic X processor, which in Canon's world is so far only available on the 1DX Mark III. However, I fully expect Digic X in some form or another to make it onto pretty much all future EOS and hopefully PowerShot cameras, which in turn should, again, hopefully mean that some, most, or even all of those in the future could support the HIF format.
Right, that's enough speculation. Once again, I'd love to hear what you think, especially if you're an iPhone owner who's opted for the high efficiency option over greater compatibility for your own photos. As always, if you found this useful, you can support me with a like, a follow, a coffee donation to yours truly, or by treating yourself to my in-camera book or some Tasty Camera Labs merch. Links to everything below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.